Hello and welcome to 33rd lecture of video course on travelogy. Today's topic is bearing clearance. In previous lecture, we studied, we understood various sources of friction and in ideal condition, even though there is a friction loss, temperature rise will not be significant well within limit. So, bearing operation will be stable, but there is a possibility if there is no clearance in a bearing, bearing is preloaded or we said there is some sort of interference or in other words there is a negative clearance between the rolling components, then there is a possibility of high temperature rise. That is we are going to explore today, we are going to discuss about those issues. So, bearing clearance is important from those point of view. How to define bearing clearance? This is uh, so the bearing clearance can be shown by this diagram or a sketch. This is an inner ring, inner ring is hollow, so this portion is a hollow portion. This is a rolling element ball, it can be roller also, but in this case we are using ball. So, there are two balls and this is outer ring, outer ring again is a hollow that is why the cross section is shown out here, this portion and this portion and they are connected with line. As usual they are uh, two dimension well defined, there is a D is a bow diameter, it is the same as a shaft diameter. If I forget or I say they do not count the tolerance and capital D is the outer diameter of bearing, capital D and small d generally both are defined in bearing catalogs. What else is there? There is something like a CD, this is diametral clearance. How to get it? Say in the outer ring, if we assume the axis of this bearing is horizontal, naturally gravity force will be acting vertical down direction. Outer ring is stationary, is supported ball is getting support from outer ring by getting contact or when it comes in a contact. Inner ring is getting supported or we say gets support from the ball by touching the ball surface. Same thing in the opposite diametral opposite side is another ball which gets support from the inner ring. Now, they are in a contact outer ring in contact with the ball, ball in a contact with inner ring, inner ring in contact with the ball, but outer ring is completely stationary, it is been fixed. So, there is a some separation and that makes a diametral clearance. If I divide by 2, it will be radial clearance and often in bearing catalog, radial clearance is defined, something like this. Say in this case, uh, bearing table uh, clearance table is given. First column says a bow diameter and gives a range. It is uh, generally 0 to 10 mm, 10 to 18 mm, 18 to 4, 24 mm. There is another we call a radial clearance C2, and we have a standard clearance. If nothing has been mentioned about the reduced clearance or higher side clearance then it will be standard clearance. So, you bear when the bearing is a lesser than 10 mm, the standard clearance or radial clearance is 2 to 13 micron, there is a margin of 11 microns, there is a variation of 11 microns. Same thing when you go for high diameter, let us take an example of 30 mm, 30 mm to 40 mm that means, there is a 0 6 series and 0 8 series, in between there will be 0 7 series also. What we are getting? Minimum clearance, minimum standard clearance as a 6 microns, maximum standard clearance as a 20 micron. Now, there is some gap, the 14 micron, there is a possibility of variation in the clearance, variation in clearance for the different bearings in the same group. When we go for higher side 10 to uh, 100 to 120 mm bow diameter, what we are getting the 15 to 66 micron clearance, this gap is increasing significantly. 
Now, we have another table or we are able to see this uh, column also that is called a C 2 clearance where the minimum clearance is 0, maximum clearance is a 0 a here it is 7 micron that means for the bearing having bow diameter lesser than 10 mm this clearance will be 7 micron or lesser than that minimum value here is a 0. So, 0 to 7 microns coming to the second category uh, second range of 10 to 18 mm what we are getting 0 to 9 micron. You can see in this case available range is relatively smaller compared to this range. So, these bearings can be used for the more precise operations for the instruments where we require exact position of the shaft and there we require a lesser tolerance. So, obviously, the permissible tolerance will be lesser side. We do not want to change the bearing performance, obviously, bearing performance should not be changed because of manufacturing processes. We want more reliable performance and more and more reliability comes whenever there is a lesser and lesser with this available range. Because if I want to, turn, want to install 10 bearing and uh, 2 bearings, some may say the clearance is 3 micron and 2 bearings clearance is 11 micron. Actually, performance from the 2 to 11 micron will be very, very different because of the clearance of available or noise level will be different and if there is a preload or installation procedure, there is something wrong in that, then bearing performance will change. How? That is going to be we are going to discuss in uh, next few slides. So, let us take this as the bearing clear, uh, mounting. Now, bearing need to be mounted on a shaft. So, there is a shaft. We say there is a axis, maybe we are assuming the geometry axis, geometric axis of the bearing and geometric axis of the shaft, they are matching, they are aligned, they are on the same line. There is no difference, there is no eccentricity. But as bearing is going to rotate with the shaft, and if we do not have any firm connection between inner ring and the shaft, there will be possibility of the slip and we do not want that. Because if there is a slip, bearing is not going to fulfill its intended function. In addition, there will be some sort of heat generation and that we are going to lose some energy there that is not desirable from the product point of view. So, there is a some sort of interference fit in between these two. Now, if there is an interference fit, what is going to happen? There will be some sort of push or this, this ring, inner ring will get deformed. Our geometry of the dimension over here will increase by some value, it may be any delta value. So, there will be change in a geometry after the installation. Obviously, the change in the dimension of inner ring after installation when the shaft is pushed in bearing or bearing is pushed over the shaft, there will be some change in the dimension of inner ring and that is on a positive side the dimension will increase in a volume. If there is an increase in the dimension because of uh, this push fit, there will be reduction in C D, available space for uh, C D obviously the radial clearance or diameter clearance will reduce. Now, there is another one this outer ring need to be fitted with a housing. Housing is a stationary and we want this bearing outer ring to be stationary. Then we require some sort of a fit. Generally, we do not recommend the interference fit for this purpose, we require a transition fit. It is not there is a some clearance and some interference fit. We can say there is a some sort of surface roughness and that makes itself as a some fit in that. So, that is important. Now, if there is a some sort of fit and there is a some sort of a disturbance in outer ring, again there is a possibility of some change in outer ring over here. Some dimension will decrease, obviously outer ring inner dimension will decrease. If that there is a this ring is going to decrease, obviously it comes down, this ring, uh, ring is going to go up, what will happen available space will reduce and that is going to reduce the diametral clearance and there is a possibility of negative clearance also that will generate interference fit between the balls inner ring and outer ring will create a more difficulty in rotation 
will cause more friction and we should avoid that as far as possible. How to avoid that? That is always a big question. How to mount it properly? That is always a big question. However, we can say or we can uh, conclude from side the bearings are mounted on a shaft and housing with a transition to interference fit. Transition fit, I uh, just, uh, we recommend it for the housing and uh, outer ring and interference fit between the shaft and inner ring. To get that kind of interference fit or transition fit, we say we know the bore diameter of the bearing is D. We are assuming that there is no uh, variation, there is no tolerance on the bearing, bearings have been manufactured with the precision and uh, there is no tolerance on the, there is no available tolerance on the bore of uh, bearing. But there is a possibility we should account if we have a knowledge of that. For timing, we are taking this diameter of the shaft as a d plus delta. That may be a 1 micron, 2 micron, 10 micron, 20 micron depends on what kind of interference rate we, we need. And uh, when this larger diameter is pushed in a bearing bore diameter d, there will be some sort of deformation, there will be contact pressure and that contact pressure is going to keep shaft and inner ring intact together. But it is going to cause some deflection of the inner ring and that is going to cause some reduction in the clearance, available clearance. Similarly, if you go for the transition fit of the housing, we can keep D as it is plus delta 1. This D is the outer diameter um, of a ring and um, that is uh, what we say that in this case uh, plus uh, whatever the thickness of uh, whatever we are saying the two times of thickness of the housing plus we keep this one as a delta 1. This is uh, maybe much lesser than what we are keeping over here. But here we are keeping this uh, D as a diameter, outer diameter of the bearing plus two times the thickness of uh, housing. Now, what we covered is the bearings are mounted on a shaft and housing with a transition to interference fit and if interference fit exceeds the internal radial clearance, whatever we are uh, doing, if that is going to cause a reduction in the radial clearance because of the mounting and we are going to mount or we are going to do some sort of the manufacturing processes or we are going to fit it uh, by some assembly procedures. If uh, that interference fit exceeds the internal radial clearance, there is a possibility of preloading of rolling element bearing. Obviously, this will cause a some sort of deflection and that is uh, showing or that is going to show there is a preload on the bearing. And if there is a preload on the bearing, naturally friction loss will increase, temperature rise will be on a higher side. Whenever there is a situation like uh, we require higher clearance or lesser clearance, then we can follow the standard tables available in the uh, catalog. Say we have studied this uh, radial clearance, standard size, then we talked something about uh, C2 clearance, which is the lesser than this clearance, but there is a possibility to choose higher clearance like C3 clearance. C3 clearance will be always a larger than C0 clearance, obviously the C standard clearance. Similar way, C4 clearance, which is on a higher side, it will be having higher clearance compared to C standard or compared to C3 clearance. So, it is in the range lowest clearance, you say moderate clearance, high clearance, and highest clearance. In this case, or uh, it can be made of the C5 clearance also for the particular uh, some companies where the operating range is very high or temperature range is very high, and we need to. Uh, account expansion of the shaft, expansion of the inner ring, expansion of rolling element and expansion of outer ring that will be non-uniform and we need to find out because of the temperature increase, because of the expansion of the dimension of individual elements, how much clearance we need to keep. Or in other word, what we are discussing at uh, room temperature, clearance is very high, maybe say C4 clearance. When we operate it or we have fit the bearing and start operation on that, our bearing starts supporting the shaft, then that time running clearance will be lesser than what we are providing the initial clearance. That is because of the temperature. What we are mentioning, like in this case 2 to 13 micron is the clearance, 
while a C4 clearance is a 14 to 29 micron. So, if I take a mean value, if I take a mean value of this, when we say it's a 12, uh, 2 plus 13 divided by 2, it will be 7.5 micron, while in this case, a 14 plus 29, it will 43 divided by 2 is a 20. Uh, 21.5 micron. So, 7.5 micron to 21.5 micron. This we when we uh, assemble initially at the room temperature, this will be higher clearance with 21.5 micron is the average clearance or mean clearance. When, when we operate the temperature because of the thermal expansion, it may come back to the 7.5 micron clearance which is a desirable. So, whenever uh, there is a high temperature application, we need to choose higher clearance or C 3 clearance and C 4 clearance. Generally, these are defined with a suffix. What is the bearing number? We say the 6214. Suffix with a C 3 or suffix with a C 2 or suffix with a C 4. If there is no suffix, then it is a standard clearance. So, what we said high temperature, high operating temperature environment requires a larger bearing clearance. It is clear because of the expansion we need to account those and clearance will reduce with an uh, operating temperature. So, we need to account those. Now, we were talking about the clearance and uh, we are talking about the some sort of the delta variation and some tolerances naturally, we need to consider what are the manufacturing processes. How do we recommend if we design some bearing or we say that we select a bearing for the some design component, design component may be the shaft, maybe the housing. Then what kind of manufacturing should be recommended or if we know the manufacturing processes, we will be able to understand what kind of clearances uh, will be there or final clearance after mounting what kind of clearance will be there whether those are fine or not or they are appropriate or not. So, generally manufacturing processes are uh, defined with uh, IT grade, we say that um, is a tolerance grade, tolerance grade 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 up to 16. As a tolerance grade increases, allowable toleran uh, tolerance is increasing. I would say that uh, IT 16 will have a larger tolerance range compared to IT 1 grade. Next one is the manufacturing processes, it because of this tolerance range itself depends on the manufacturing processes. Take an example of the lapping, very good operation, super finish operation, and still this is uh, giving us some range IT grade 2 to 5. It is not giving exact value. So, we are in a some sort of uh, uh, variable limit, we say that uh, dimensions are dimension will be variable. Coming to the another operation of honing, which will be in this case we are not including IT2 grade because it cannot give as good surface or uh, tolerance as a lapping. That is why it is coming in the range of 3 to 5. Talking about the super finish, other operations, slendering, uh, cylinder grinding is another operation we are got, what we are getting when we are going for the grinding, a good operation of manufacturing operation. Still, we are getting a range from IT4 to IT7. We are not getting only IT, it is in range, depends on the operating parameter, what kind of the uh, what kind of tolerance we are going to get that will affect. When we talk about the simple operation like a turning operation, like a milling operation, still we are getting on the versus side is IT grade 6 to IT grade 9. In this case, or IT grade 10 also included, while well, milling starting itself is IT 9. Actually, when we talk about IT grades, we need to know what is a tolerance limit for that. So, we should refer some table. We have, uh, we know the IT grade or so we know the manufacturing processes, we will be knowing from that angle or from that point of view what is IT uh, grade for that manufacturing processes. Once we know IT grade, we need to refer to the dimensional table and see what is a tolerance limit. For that purpose, we can refer uh, this kind of table. We say um, this generally grades or IT grades also depends on the dimension. Like in this case, uh, first case the dimension is more than 1 mm and lesser than 3 mm or 3 millimeter. For that case, IT grade is uh, IT grade 1 gives a 0.8 micron uh, variation in the dimension, while uh, so for higher cases we can see this range is also increasing, this value is also increasing what we talk about a 30 to 50 mm maybe say is the bore diameter or uh, we say the shaft diameter 30 to 50, what we are going to get a uh, tolerance limit of 1.5 micron when we are choosing IT 1. When we go for higher side like IT 6, 
but we are getting a 16 micron variation. And if the bearing clearance is only 16 micron, if we choose this manufacturing process of 16 microns, then what will happen? There is a possibility of a variation. If the 16 micron on negative side, there will be clearance will be just double. And when the clearance on uh, the 16 on the positive side, there will not be any clearance. If we go for worse process, not worse process, we say that process is always good, but kind of the uh, tolerance range which we can get from the manufacturing process is going on that side. So, the IT grade 9 or IT grade 8, in this case, is 16 micron, but this is turning out to be 39 micron when generally bearing will not be having that much clearance. If we choose this kind of surfaces, naturally bearings are going to subject to the interference fit and whenever there is an interference fit, there is a possibility of extra preload on the surface and uh, extra frictional force on the surface. There is another uh, way to calculate IT uh, grade um, um, tolerance limit. But we say uh, instead of just referring the table, we can go ahead with this one. We say if I know the what is IT grade, and this is generally recommended for the bearing IT grade 5, IT grade 6, IT grade 7, IT grade 8. That value in micron can be calculated by this relation. Say for 5, it is IT 5, it is a 7i. For IT grade 6, it is a 10i. IT grade 8, it is a 25i. So, question comes what is i? This is again uh, yeah, some sort of uh, unit uh, gives and it depends on the dimension or depends on the diameter of the surface uh, which we really require or we say that we are trying to find out the tolerance for uh, that kind of uh, surface. So, if the D is a diameter, you say this suppose uh, this is a shaft, shaft diameter and we want to find out what will be the tolerance limit on the shaft surface. So, this is a given I as a 0.45 D uh, cube root of D plus some uh, point, uh, 0 0.001 or the 0.1 percent D. Once we know diameter, we can calculate what will be the IT 5 tolerance limit, what will be the IT grade 6 tolerance limit, what will be the IT grade 7 tolerance, what will be the IT grade 8 tolerance. Let us take some example, very simple example, we say the shaft diameter is just 5 mm. It can be 10 mm also, it can be 15 mm, it can be 20 mm. For present case, what we are doing is, is uh, we are choosing I, uh, this diameter as uh, only 5 mm. And we use this relation, um, the way it has been defined, I has been defined over here and we know IT 5 is a 7 into I, IT 6 is 10 into I, IT 7 is a 16 into I and IT 8 is a 25 into I. Now, if we use that, what we are going to get in micron, IT 5 is a 0.5 micron, that is the lowest value, IT 8 is we are going to get 19 micron for 5 mm and that is a going to is a compatible with the table on the only thing in this case is it helps us a mathematical calculation and we try to find out what will be the exact uh, uh, tolerance on the surface uh, for different manufacturing processes. Now, what we discuss about uh, this crate and we are again showing the table over here, we say that radial clearance for lesser than 10 mm, even for the C2 clearance is a 0 to 7 micron. For radial clearance for uh, uh, C0 uh, or standard clearance is a C uh, lesser than bearing diameter is a lesser than 10 mm is between 2 to 13 micron. So, if I take a mean value that comes to 7.5 micron. Of course, this is the radial clearance and what we are talking about this is the diameter. So, 7.5 micron if I assume that and I go ahead with uh, this IT grade 19 for 5 mm, what we are going to get maybe say uh, this is a diameter clearance. So, radial uh, diameter variation, radial variation will be around uh, 9.5, 9.6. We compare 7.5 with uh, 9.5 we are not going to get a very good results, it will cause a negative clearance and that too because of the shaft, we are not considering the housing fitting. Naturally, we cannot choose this kind of manufacturing process, we also the manufacturing processes which is providing IT 8 grade uh, surface. Naturally, we need to go with the sub -sub of super finish operation, we, come, we need to come down to a 5 or 6 grade, where we are getting lesser um, uh, 
variation in this case like a 7 point uh, we say the 8 micron roughly 8 micron divided by 2 is a 4 micron 4 micron can be adjustable for the mean value of 7.5 micron that is uh, still some clearance is capped and bearing will work satisfactorily. Now, we were discussing about the fit which we should be providing for the manufacturing or so the bearing surfaces and what we get a standard bearing uh, fit which are available in the catalog or a number of books is one is called a light duty fit other one is called a medium duty fit. When we talk about the light duty that means it is having a lesser load, medium duty means higher load. And of course, this fit also depends on the speed because the shaft is going to rotate and inner ring is going to get mounted on that. If higher there is a speed is a higher side, naturally we have to go for a higher fit obviously that uh, closer fit obviously that we need to keep a uh, larger interference for high speed application compared to the low speed application and that is why it is given light duty course operation is H 8 K 7 for normal operation it is H 7 K 6, fine case it is H 6 K 5. Now, if the load is increasing what we are going to do, we are going to go for the better fit, much closer fit for the same kind of the speed. If we say speed is same uh, in this case uh, for uh, medium, duty, uh, medium duty fine cases which is having very close fit which the speed is very high it will be H 6 M 5 and uh, for the coarse case it will be H 8 M 7. What is a common in these two is uh, housing tolerance will be same. H is uh, for housing case or we say that uh, capital letter is generally for the bore. So, bore, uh, bore fit will remain same for the light duty as well as the heavy duty or the medium duty. When we talk about uh, shaft fit that is changing in this case a K 5, K 6, K 7 here M 5, M 6, M 7. 5 is again IT grade, IT grade 5, IT grade 6, IT grade 7. In this case, M5 which has a, a closer fit compared to this, obviously that if we use this there will be more interference between shaft and inner ring compared to this one and which is also desirable for the larger load there will be larger friction force and then there will be possibility of the shearing of the junction. So, here the M5, M6 and M7 is M IT grade 5, M IT grade 6, IT grade 7 question comes what is this k and what is this m and how do we define it. Again this comes from uh, standard uh, uh, tables or uh, standard figures. One of the standard figure is generally we see a number of uh, handbook is something like this. This picture is not very clear, but I will what I will do I will try to superimpose with uh, some uh, relevant features. This is uh, like this. This is a housing or is the capital letter uh, domain. You can see here uh, this side is a negative that means we are going to reduce the dimension. If the dimension of uh, bearing a bore is a 50 mm and we choose uh, uh, IT grade of the fit uh, this, uh, this side naturally dimension will be lesser than 50 mm is a 50 minus some uh, micron uh, dimension. So, there will be a causing a, if we put directly on a shaft of the 50 mm that will cause a interference. So, this this side is going to generate some interference on the shaft. Coming to the this side what we are going to get is a clearance. You can see A to G there is a some uh, definite clearance initially it may be 30 to 40 microns while coming to the H there is a no change it is just touching the surface obviously the base deviation is almost 0 while here deviation is small, maybe so IT 1 grade will come somewhere here, IT 16 will come somewhere here. As we are moving this side, IT grade is going to increase, we keep IT 5, so will be somewhere here. As uh, this is a line between the clearance and interference, there will be some sort of overlap in this uh, domain and what we say that because of surface roughness, there will be some sort of transition fit, that is why that we say H as a transition fit while this J S is a closer fit and what we have seen in a previous uh, slide it was H. So, H 5 maybe can will come somewhere here, H 6 will come somewhere here, H 7 comes somewhere here because this complete range is I T grade that is what we are showing 1 to 16 grade has been given on this. We need to choose a proper uh, 
dimension and that can be figured out from this, this is a 0, this is a 50 micron and somewhere maybe 20 to 25 micron will be there that is uh, up to IT grade obviously there will be a variation even though we are talking of the 50 mm uh, diameter of the bearing bore, actual diameter of the manufacturing will be slightly more than that. It will be 50 plus maybe say 20 micron or maybe just uh, 15 to 20 micron. So, that is going to give us some sort of clearance and we know that because of surface roughness itself or some sort of irregularities in surface that will cause a in, uh, transition fit and generally housing and outer ring we prefer transition fit that that was uh, discussed or described in previous slide previous to previous slides. So, this is a for the housing a similar uh, superimposition can be done for the shaft again there is a clearance or uh, there is a 0 line and uh, this is on the negative side this is on the positive side. What is the meaning of positive side you say that if a shaft diameter is a 50 mm and I am choosing some uh, um, range of say some grade such a manner that the shaft comes to this side that is on a positive side. Now, for 50 mm bore if I have a shaft diameter 50 plus some delta that is going to cause some interference. That is why we say this complete domain is interference domain. This is a clearance stroming. Similarly, in this case, the shaft diameter is lesser than 50 mm. Obviously, the, I'm just choosing the 50 as a number. It's not necessarily only 50. It can be 100. It can be 150. It can be 5. It can be 10. Also, depends. Now, in this case, particularly, what we are seeing, uh, if it is going this side, the shaft diameter is reduced from the 50 mm, and that is going to generate some sort of a clearance. Naturally, we will not be choosing this side. We need to choose only this side. And that is why the when we talk about the k fit and m fit, okay, this k is always in this direction and m is always in this direction. That is why I say that uh, h6, h7 and h8 can give some sort of transition fit. There is a clearance between outer ring and housing, but uh, still we are using the word transition fit because we do not know exactly value. There is a change in uh, surface roughness, there will be change in uh, surface uh, profile also that is going to cause some sort of transition fit. Uh, similarly, what we talk about the shaft is a K5, K6, K7, K5, K6, 7 uh, will come somewhere here in this range naturally. So, what we are going to get uh, we say this somewhere here 5 to 7 is somewhere here. So, what we are going to get is uh, interference fit between the bearing bow and the shaft and we want to increase because of the heavy load we want to increase that interference that is why we have to give initial deviation that means 50 and if the initial deviation is 30 micron. So, it will be 50.03 plus whatever the IT grade we are suggesting better IT grade will start from here lower IT grade will start from here obviously higher IT grade will start from here. So, this is uh, demonstrating obviously this is illustrating us that how to choose uh, proper surfaces if we know what kind of interference fit we need to keep it in the shaft and uh, bearing bore or bearing uh, bore diameter or the inner ring diameter then uh, we can choose proper fit and generally it has been recommended at 6 K5, at 7 uh, K6, H8, K7 this kind of fit for the bearing for the depending on the application. Now, what we are coming to the uh, negative part of uh, this uh, clearance of the negative clearance where we say that negative clearance before operation if it start is going to cause some sort of elastic force on the ring surfaces obviously between ring and rolling element surfaces because there will be contact and that there will be some sort of deformation of the bearing surfaces. What will happen it has a merits as well as a T merits it is generally required if there is a high speed application was uh, shown in a previous slide also for high speed we require closer tolerance and we require more and more interference fit. But this is also negative if you go for more interference fit or the high uh, tolerance even for the same friction force heat generation will increase. If there is a high heat generation and that is going to increase the temperature there is a possibility of instable operation because high temperature is going to reduce the viscosity of the lubricant. The reduction in the viscosity is going to increase the friction uh, coefficient of friction 
increase in the coefficient of friction is going to increase energy loss, increase in energy loss is going to cause more temperature and again high temperature is going to reduce the viscosity. So, there will be chain reaction will be at catastrophic and uh, there is a possibility of bearing failure may be seen few hour operation itself. Another uh, positive point about the, this uh, negative clearance is an uh, increase in its stiffness. Naturally, if the sharp, some shaft is a hunting or natural frequency is lower and we want to increase the stiffness, naturally we can uh, increase uh, obviously can decrease uh, clearance or bring some sort of negative clearance, there will be more and more stiffness in the system and the natural frequency of the system will increase and that may reduce the vibration problem. So, there is a there are good features about that, but what we are talking if it is done not properly, if it is not done intentionally, it is not uh, done with the complete science, there is a possibility of high friction. And uh, this is another advantage has been mentioned preload is also used to prevent or suppress shaft runouts or we are talking about the 49 or 50 mm diameter. So, there will be some sort of runouts on the surface also vibration and a noise. So, these are the positive feature, but they are negative features also of this tolerance. In addition to that, there is a possibility of misalignment. Misalignment, it even though we makes a good grade um, uh, shaft, or is a IT grade we keep even the phi and we try to uh, uh, maintain within the tolerance of uh, bearing, I say overall uh, to variation in the shaft geometry and the bearing geometry are well within the limit and is not going to kill or is a eat away all the clearance of the bearing. Even in that situation, we need to be more careful about the bearing length. To demonstrate that, what we say that we assume that this is the one bearing end and this is another bearing end and they are connected with a straight line we need to keep a perfect alignment of the bearing or we say it should be parallel to the shaft surface or we say that it should be parallel to the uh, aligned to the bearing axis as well as uh, uh, shaft axis. But there is a possibility of some change, some when we push it there is a possibility of some variation. Let us say this one if I am assuming this point or this point is a constant and there is a some misalignment in this which cannot be in uh, rule out. When we assemble the component, there will be there is a possibility of uh, some sort of misalignment if uh, because the shafts are manufactured of the different machines and bearings are manufactured or the, we are buying those are manufactured from the, on the different machine and there will be some variation in axis. It is not, not, not necessarily it will be 100 percent correct with the 99 percent chances are there will be some variation. Now, if this degree this angle of inclination even is a 0 0.1 degree. What we are going to get for 30 mm length, we are going to get a preload of 52 microns. So, substantially high value. Shaft length 30 mm is very ordinary. Obviously, that uh, bearing uh, bore diameter or bearing length of 30 mm is very ordinary length. And what we are talking about uh, 0.1 degree is very difficult to quantify also, it is very difficult to measure also and that gives us still a 52 micron preloading. I would say 52 micron deflection from the one surface if it is a more than clearance. Now, if I think about even the 0 0.01 percent it still it is going to give us a 5 micron preloading, 5 micron pre deflection. Naturally, we need to keep clearance whenever we are assembling, we need to keep this clearance or clearance more than this. We know these are the operation we choose proper clearance, external clearance will be there and then we need to find out okay, mean clearance is of this order or not. If it is not of this order naturally we should choose us, we think about some other period. Now, this is a what uh, how it has been calculated is a simple uh, relation has been used the misalignment of the deflection as a 10 of a 0.1 degree and uh, this is a 10 d says that it will be is not necessary we have to give 0.1 degree in a radian we can directly give in, ra uh, in degree itself and the length of the uh, this uh, is a bearing length and this is a what the bearing length is a 30 mm or 30,000 microns and we are getting microns in a 52 micron in this case. Now, if you are reducing it to the from 0.1 to 0.01 what we are getting is still other 5.2 microns. 
So, that is a substantial and we need to account whenever there is a possibility of this kind of problems. Right. Now, what is a, what is a problem with uh, this kind of interference what we are talking about the 5 micron preloading, 52 micron preloading. Is there any relation really with the force? Yes, there is a relation. We have discussed uh, this slide in um, one of our lubrication mechanism slides. We say that um, this uh, assuming the shafts uh, uh, assuming the ball in perfect shape initially. Now, if you deflect by delta 1, you punch the surface of a ball so that it gets deflected by delta 1 and that delta 1 may be 1 micron, 2 micron, 5 micron, 10 micron depends or the softness depends on the stiffness of the surface and depends on the load which is applied on the ball. Then in that case what we uh, this deflection versus the force can be given by this relation which has been uh, mentioned as uh, a reference of this uh, um, equation is, been ref, uh, is, is given over here. We have discussed this equation earlier in uh, uh, lubrication mechanism class of the lecture. Now here E is a Young's modulus generally for the steel or the material which we are using for the bearing is generally is very high is more like a 207 giga Pascal and nu is a poison ratio may vary from a 0 0.23 to 0 0.3 for our case of our most of the bearing material it is uh, capped as a 0 0.28 and radius is uh, naturally the radius of the ball which we is getting uh, deformed or which is subjected to deformation. So, what we get? Say, so, I am keeping R as a 6 mm, uh, 6 mm um, ball is a relatively bigger size, it can be laser on. So, but 6 mm ball, and uh, if I am assuming this deformation is only 5 micron, 5 micron deformation, which is not very unusual thing, is the most often happens and it is more generally more than that. Nu as a 0.28, which was mentioned and E as a 207 giga Pascal and if we are keeping in a Newton per mm square, it will turn out to be 207000. What we are getting force as a 42000 Newton, which is very, very high force just by deflecting 5, 5 micron. If there is an interference rate and interference rate which is directly uh, imparted to the ball or is causing a interference between the ball and inner ring. I'm assuming time being the inner ring is a flat uh, surface in this case because generally they have a larger uh, radius that is going to cause a 42,000 Newton a substantially high value and if we consider this 42,000 Newton in friction losses naturally coefficient of friction will be higher side and temperature rise will be there. So, let us take uh, um, what we example we consider or we uh, uh, discuss in a previous lecture, we will just repeat uh, that example with some addition of uh, 5 micron as a deflection or interference. So, this is the table or this is the complete same slide. So, estimate bearing operating temperature, bearing number is defined 6214, this is the deep brew ball bearing, second diameter of the series. 14 is a bow diameter, which is 14 into 5 is a bow diameter. 2 RS1 is a something like a, it has a both the side seals, is running at a 6000 rpm with a operating load of 5000 Newton. Having some sort of lubrication mechanism, which has a lubricant has a viscosity of 6 millimeter per millimeter square per second, and that is a room temperature. Now, assume uh, ambient temperature 30 degree, we are talking about this viscosity at this temperature. Ball diameter, in previous slide we took uh, radius of the 6 mm, in this case we are talking about the 12 mm diameter. Deflection due to improper mounting, maybe you are not able to keep perfect alignment, so that the deflection of the negative clearance is going to cause of, is, a, uh, is going to uh, uh, bearing surfaces together may be getting deflected by 5 micron or the ball itself is getting deflected by 5 micron. And there is a force cooling of the bearing, we are already discussed for the force cooling, cooling factor comes out to be uh, uh, 2.5 for natural cooling, it will be 1 for the closed circuit where there is no heat dissipation, proper heat dissipation that will turn out to be 0 0.5. Now, we are choosing a deep group ball bearing, naturally we need to choose what will be a coefficient of friction in ideal condition, 
ideal condition is still I am saying because of the load. Now, that coefficient of friction is a 0 0.0015. However, in the real case, this coefficient of friction will be on higher side wherever there is a misalignment. Now, using this relation without considering the preload because of the deflection, what we get MP is the moment due to the load is something like a 262.5 Newton mm, which is the same what we have done in our earlier uh, example uh, which was discussed in previous lecture. Now, think about the preload. What is a preload in this case is given as a 5 micron over here, the delta F1 is a 5 micron. Yeah, e may be can treated as a Young's modulator 207 giga Pascal and R is a given or a 6 mm our ball diameter is a 12 mm. So, R will be 6 mm in this situation. So, what we are going to get? Say E has been given as a 207000 unit is a Newton per mm square, radius is 6 mm, deflection is a point uh, also the deflection of 5 micron and new Poisson ratio is 0.28. What we are getting F as a 42 33 points uh, 337.86 something which is at 42338 Newton. This is the same thing which we have sh uh, shown and now uh, we have seen in a previous slide. Now, if I implement this, if I use this as a preload, I will say that uh, pre uh, instead of writing P, we write P plus this F, then what we are going to get moment due to load as a 2485 Newton mm, what is a, we, are, we are keeping a units, but you can see it is almost a 10 times jump 262.5 here it is coming at 2485 almost 10 times jump in momentum. Applied load is not affecting that much compared to this one. And that can also be said that this applied load is only 5000 Newton, this is turning out to 42000 Newton is naturally 8.5 times, 8.5 times plus 1 it will be 9.5 times. So, it is that is why I am saying as almost 10 times or less than 9.5 times. Now, other relation I am timing we are keeping same even though we know with the preloading sliding will increase and that is going to cause additional losses. For time being we are choosing okay, sliding the same uh, we will need to get a some number first. So, ML because of the viscosity uh, because of the sliding and um, viscosity shearing can be gained by this relation and that is turning out to be 101. This is the same thing which we got in previous uh, uh, lecture example, but in actual case there will be more sliding and this also will get amplified. But at a time we do not want to consider all the factors together and will not give the impression what is happening. So, for the independent point of view just for preload which is affecting the force how uh, much variation will occur we are trying to discuss this one we are emphasizing on that. Same thing if I consider seals this is a 2 RS uh, is a seal unit we are using as 105 Newton mm. Again in uh, this was a loss in uh, ideal cases if the bearing shaft is getting deflected by 5 micron or more than that and finally, the shaft is bearing uh, ball and uh, race is uh, getting deflected by 5 micron, even in that in those situations seal will also get uh, deflected and that will also cause a more friction and that will increase this value that will increase I must say maybe 2 times maybe 3 times of this. Does not matter as we are just trying to understand only the load component. So, we are keeping ML same, MS same, only MP is changed. If I, I sum up all together, what we are going to get 2691. The major component is because of the load dependent component. Even though it is affecting seal, it is going to affect the sliding, but still for, you know, for time being we are not considering those, we are just focusing only one component that is giving us a 2691 Newton mm as a total moment, uh, total uh, friction moment on that. Now, to find out what will be the temperature rise, we need to find out the, we need to find out a relevant parameter, outer diameter is in this case is 125, length is 24 mm. So, what we calculate generally dm the mean diameter into b and we found that this is a 2340. <coughs> which is um, lesser than 4000. So, 
we can choose some um, heat uh, density as a 20,000 watt per meter square in the same unit. This is a clear to us which is the same which we have discussed in previous picture. Now, the energy equation the energy generated and energy dissipated this is giving energy generated and or heat generated and had heat dissipated. Here the length is a b and this is the minimum diameter and maximum diameter we are trying to find a whole surface area. What is the pi b into minimum dia pi b into maximum dia this is giving outer diameter where the heat dissipation can happen because of that. Similarly, inner diameter periphery also heat dissipation happens because of that that is why it has been summed up it is not kept as a average value. This k t is a factor which is uh, giving uh, uh, get some value as a 0 0.5 1 1 2, 2.5 2.5 generally is recommended whether there is a sufficient cooling or uh, heat circulation system is there when there is a complete uh, natural layer and uh, it is an open system k t will be 1 and uh, when uh, it is a environment in such a manner as heat circulation is not sufficient is not proper then k t will turn out to be 0 0.5. This is a two, uh, 20,000 which we uh, discussed in a previous slide and this is a change in temperature. If I am uh, know the ambient temperature, I can find out what the operating temperature. Omega is the speed of operation or rotational speed of the shaft and this is the total movement. So, when we do that what we are getting this 30 is the ambient temperature, we are getting 2.3 degrees centigrade temperature rise because of this section. Earlier what we got around 0.38 or some lesser than that temperature rise and uh, so there is a significant variation in temperature rise. Here it is coming uh, 2.3 is coming because of sufficient cooling as the cooling is sufficient on the surface, but if it does not happen the cooling is not sufficient then we can uh, use it instead of 2.51 value and what we find the temperature rises by 5.8 degree. And this temperature rise is just because of load component. We are not considered lubrication component, obviously, the sliding component, we are not considered seal component. And it has been realized ordinary slightly change in uh, mounting increases the temperature from uh, 1 to 10 degree, I mean, many times more than 10 degree. That is a major problem if the temperature rises more than 10 degree, we should replace a bearing or we should. Uh, open it and try to remount it bearing otherwise there is a possibility of catastrophic failure of a bearing or associate components. And if I try to find out the average uh, coefficient of friction what we do the whatever the movement we got divide by uh, uh, bow diameter of that and um, not diameter radius bow radius of that and whatever the initial or applied load. So, this is a movement, this is applied load. What we are going to get here is a coefficient of friction as a 0 0.015. Keep in mind, we selected coefficient of friction from the table at 0 0.0015. So, this coefficient of friction is a 10 times compared to that coefficient of friction which we initially considered based on the bearing selection criteria. This coefficient of friction is increasing by 10 <coughs> times. That is why we say that due to preloading, coefficient of friction changes drastically. In actual case, seal will uh, play major role because of deformation, more rubber uh, um, f contact force, and that will shear the force, uh, shear the uh, seal as well as uh, cause the damage of seal as well as uh, cause a more friction. But uh, this says clearly the coefficient of friction is uh, heavily affected. Sometime. Um, from industry point of view, I believe that oh, this coefficient of friction is still is not very high, just a 0 0.015. Who, who cares about this? This is a very low coefficient of friction. If I compare with the sliding coefficient uh, bearing, coefficient of friction will be more than 0.1 or 0.2. If I you think about the dry bearing totally, then coefficient of friction will be 0.3. So, why do we think about this? Even though this rolling element bearing is giving very low coefficient of friction, I should select this kind of coefficient of friction itself. I do not have to worry and I can treat this as uh, anti friction bearing. This is the way uh, the name is uh, popular we say that rolling element bearings are anti friction bearing effective coefficient of friction is lesser, 
but there will be friction losses, there will be heat generation and if there is improper mounting bearing will fail in no time. It will not take much longer time to fail that bearing. We will uh, continue rolling element bearing, we will be talking about uh, how to lubricate that bearing, what are the lubrication mechanism in our next lecture. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you.